Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to my review of Lucha on the Ground Season 4, Episode 2, called Darkness and the Monster. And just got done finished watching it. And I gotta say, this was another good episode uh, to Lucha on the Ground. You know, Lucha on the Ground never disappoints uh, with their uh, with their episodes. So, but really enjoy, really enjoyable. Uh, episode this week and uh, we start off the episode in King Corno's uh, trophy room and Katrina ends up teleporting herself there she's searching for the gauntlet uh, King Corno comes and tells her you know the gauntlet is the gauntlet isn't here and that he gave uh, he gave it to someone you know to protect it and he says you know he doesn't know where or when he hid it and he also ends up telling Katrina that he doesn't give a shit about her. And pretty much that was basically the uh, the opening uh, seg the opening uh, segment to the episode. But uh, it was a good opening. Uh, it was a good opening to the episode. So, and then we get to uh, the first match. Uh, it was uh, Kill Shot, the Mac, and Son of Havoc. Versus Big Bad Steve, Sammy Javira, and Jake Strong, aka Jack Swagger, uh, which I'm really happy uh, Jack Swagger is now with Lucha on the Ground. And uh, this match was for the Lucha on the Ground uh, Trios Championships. And uh, before the match even started, you know, Famous B comes out, says that, you know, he has three new clients for. Uh, in Fame for uh, Infamous Inc. as what he pronounces it. Uh, he says he's, he has these three new clients because Tejano and Dr. Wagner are off making him money. And so he ends up introducing uh, the three uh, new clients, which was uh, Big Bad Steve, uh, Sammy Javira, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, and uh, Jake Strong, a.k.a. Jack Swagger. And uh, match got in the way. Uh, Killshot and Javira uh, start the match off. It was a very fast pace, you know, opening uh, to the match. Uh, Javira ends up uh, giving the middle finger to Killshot, and then we just had Killshot, you know, beat him down. Son of Havoc comes in, lays in chops. Uh, Javira cuts Javira cuts Killshot off with the drop kick. Uh, then uh, we saw uh, later on uh, Big Bad Steve and Swagger work, you know, on Havoc. Uh, Javier ends up in the uh, the Centon. Uh, then at the end of the match, uh, Jack Swagger, you know, takes out Mac. Uh, kill shot then lays in some kicks. Uh, Swagger then gets the ankle lock on on a kill shot. Uh, we see Killshot, you know, tapping out, but the referee was distracted by Famous B. Uh, Mac comes in, makes a save, hits a stunner on Big Bad Steve, and uh, Son of Havoc ends up hitting the, uh, the Shooting Star Press uh, for the win. And so Killshot, the Mac, and Son of Havoc win the match. They still retain the trios championships. And uh, after the match... Uh, after the match, Jake Strong, you know, aka Jack Swagger, takes out Big Bad Steve and Sammy Javira. And he gets pissed off at uh, Famous B because Famous B was the one who distracted the ref and cost uh, the three of them uh, the titles. Uh, he takes out his frustrations on Famous B by locking, by locking in the ankle lock on Famous B. And he ends up snapping Famous B's ankle. And that pretty much is how, you know, what what happened after the match. So, but this match was a good was a good match. It was very uh it was very action filled and uh it was a good match. And you could tell by what happened after the match that they have really big plans for uh, Jake Strong, aka Jack Swagger. Because he doesn't need Famous B. He doesn't need Info 
you know, Infomus Inc. or whatever. You know, Swagger is better as a singles competitor. And I really will, and I really love to see where they take, you know, him this season. Hopefully, they give him a shot, you know, with Pentagon Dark for the Lucha on the Ground Championship. Because when you, when I looked at uh, Swagger here and how good he was in this match, I could tell this is future Lucha on the Ground champion. I can tell you that right now. Because, you know, I, I was a fan of Swagger when he was in WWE. Uh, sadly, you know, last year he was released from WWE. And now, you know, you know and now, you know, he's going to do, he's going to do really well uh, here in Lucha on the Ground. Just by, just by this match. You know, because I know when he, after he was released from WWE, he was working the indies. And uh, I went to an indie show and he was there. Uh, didn't actually end up uh, meeting him though. But uh, he was there. Looked like, a, looked like a good guy. And, you know, really happy that, you know, he's on Lucha on the Ground now. Definitely, like I said, they're going to have, you know, big plans for for him going into this going into the season later you know later into the season really like to see where they take him so. but all in all like I said it was a good match it was very uh enjoyable action filler match and then we had uh you know Antonio Cueto uh comes out you know this was after when uh Lucha Underground came back from uh the commercial uh, Antonio Cueto ends up coming out, and we all know, you know, Antonio is just, you know, the actor who played uh, Dario Cueto, you know, in disguise, you know, dressed as, you know, with a beard and, you know, long white hair. And he ends up coming out saying that uh, Dario was considered a genius. Uh, he mentions uh, the Gift of the Gods title. Uh, he ends up saying that. Uh, the seven ancient Aztec medallions will be back in play to crown a new champion. And that it starts, you know, tonight. And so this match was for one of the seven ancient Aztec medallions. And it was Drago versus El Dragon Azteca Jr. Uh, Cobra Moon was still in control of uh, Drago. Uh, when the match uh, started, you know, Drago offered a handshake to El Dragon Azteca Jr., but, you know, instead he attacks, uh, you know, El Dragon Azteca Jr., and, you know, it's back and forth uh, with both of them. You know, El Dragon Azteca, you know, attacks with kicks, and he end up doing a shoulder tackle to uh, Drago. Uh, the end of the match, uh, El Dragon Azteca Jr. hit a wheelbarrow driver off the ropes, which was really awesome to uh, Drago and so El Dragon Azteca Jr. Uh, wins the match and uh, after the match Johnny Mundo and Taya end up you know coming out Taya ends up attacking Cobra Moon and Mundo lays out Drago uh, for, this was revenge because if you remember last week uh, Vibora end up attacking uh, Mundo and this was, you know, a nice follow-up to, you know, what happened last week. You know, Mundo getting his revenge on uh, Drago and uh, also Cobra Moon. So it was a good follow-up. But all in all, Drago versus El, Teca, uh, El Dragon Azteca Jr. Good match. Very fun. Very fun match. Enjoyable. And then we had uh, Katrina arriving in Antonio uh, Cueto's office. Uh, we saw Antonio was getting the keys for Matanza. Uh, Katrina, like I said, comes in. She explains that sh to Antonio that she's, that she's stuck between here and the spirit realm. And she wants Phoenix in a coffin in a Grave Consequences match against Mil Muertes so that she can take his life force and be free and Antonio uh, agrees with that 
And so we're going to get that match uh, next week. Or will we? Stay, stay tuned, you know, because there's a scene uh, that happened after the main event. So, but uh, from what I've read, that this is going to be uh, Mil Mor this is Mil Mortez and Phoenix's third Grave Consequences match because they already had two already, which I haven't seen though. But will it be their third their third Grave Consequences match? We'll just have to wait and see. And then we had uh, the main event. Uh, Pentagon Dark versus uh, Matanza Cueto for the Lucha on the Ground Championship. This was a good match. Really, uh, really fun match. Uh, Pentagon Dark, uh, he actually lost twice to uh, Matanza. So, uh, that's a little bit of uh, trivia. But, uh, the match started with them brawling on the floor. Pentagon Dark was in control. Uh, Pentagon was then firing away with kicks and he ended up uh, slamming Matanza into, you know, the chairs, uh, you know, where the believers are. Pentagon ends up laying, you know, the chops to Matanza, you know, to fire, you know, him up to fire Pentagon up. We see Antonio Cueto arrive to, you know, watch, you know, the match. Uh, Matanza ends up uh, slamming uh, Pentagon Dark repeatedly into the barricade and you know was then slammed into some chairs. Matanza then uh, slammed Pentagon in, onto the apron you know which is the hardest part of uh, the ring. Uh, they get back in the ring. Uh, Matanza ends up in a run and angle slam. Tries to pin uh, Pentagon Dark. Pentagon ends up uh, kicking out of that. He then, Matanza then goes to suplex uh, Pentagon Dark, uh, goes for the cover, Pentagon kicked out of that. And at the end of the match, you had uh, Pentagon, you know, fighting. He lays, in, he lays in some strikes. He then hits a super kick and a destroyer, uh, which was awesome. He then hits another one, uh, which, was, which was really cool. And then he hits... Uh, the package pile driver to Matanza and Pentagon uh, wins the match. Pentagon ends up retaining the Lucha on the Ground Championship. So then we had, uh, you know, after the match, uh, Pentagon Dark, uh, you know, looks for the, you know, tries to go for the arm break on Matanza, but Antonio Cueto arrives. Matanza ends up escaping. And so Matanza cowers from uh, Antonio, as he calls, you know, his son useless. So, but all in all, this was a good and fun main event. Uh, Pentagon finally beats Matanza, which this is Matanza's uh, first loss uh, in Lucha on the Ground. And it was just a good match. It was a very fun, very fun main event. Really liked it. Uh, both Pentagon and Matanza put on another uh, another good match. And then uh, we had uh, the post-ending uh, segment where Jeremiah Crane comes in. He meets with Antonio and he wants in in the Grave Consequences match. And the only reason he wants in is because he wants Katrina. So... Uh, Jeremiah Crane says, you know, he wouldn't take long and, you know, he wouldn't take long in the match. And Antonio mentions that, you know, Jeremiah's career won't last long either. And so that pretty much ended the uh, the episode. So next week we're getting Phoenix versus Mil Moretes versus Jeremiah Crane. It's going to be a three-way to the grave match, which that's going to be an awesome, good match to uh, to see. So, yeah, so anyways, uh, that's it for uh, th that's it for my review of Lucha on the Ground Season 4, Episode 2, uh, called Darkness and the Monster. Uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, really looking forward to wearing uh, to wear 
uh, this season is going. You know, we got, you know, Jack Swagger as Jake Strong. I, like I said again, I really would love to see uh, where they take him uh, during the season. Hopefully it leads to a uh, Lucha on the Ground championship match. But, you know, that's my predictions. That's my prediction. I, I would like to see them put the title on uh, Jake Strong, a.k.a. Jack Swagger, later in the season. But who knows if that's going to happen. So, but yeah, anyways, that's it for this review. Thank you all for watching. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And until the next video, I'll see you all later. Bye.